Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator News and Updates. And we have a DC-10, the Dash 7, and Osprey updates to the Phoenix A320 and more in today's news. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. As always, guys, feel free if you choose to go ahead and minimize this screen and just listen to me in the background. Most of it's just going to be me chatting along. There will be some screenshots shown, but uh, for the most part, it's just going to be chatting along. First up, we have an early look into the Aerodynamics KC-10 and DC-10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Aerodynamics is a team of... Uh, um, very experienced pilots and boom operators from the KC and DC-10 series. As you guys know, the DC-10 is a three-engine aircraft most commonly used by FedEx. Now, this aircraft, the coolest part about it is it is going to be completely free, and yet the team is boasting that is definitely going to be of what they would define as high fidelity. Many of the textures, textures, textures and graphics have already been completed with the aircraft, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, absolutely no complaints whatsoever with the way it looks. Now, it sounds like that the military KC-10 version is going to be first, um, and that is going to be the one with the boom um, operation as well as the inline drogue system. For those of you who don't know, the drogue is the little basket that you'll see military aircraft hooking up to in order to refuel, where the boom is the one you see primarily on Air Force aircraft where it actually connects to the aircraft physically, and you have the boom operator inside the aircraft. Now, there's going to be a bunch of different variants for the aircraft once it is finally complete. Uh, everything from civilian cargo to passenger versions, again, as well as the military versions. It sounds like they're going to be doing the Dash 30 uh, for the both the cargo and the passenger variants of the aircraft. The aircraft is also going to show plenty of the wear and tear that would be expected from an aircraft that was most popular back in the 70s through the 80s. Again, it is still flown today in some aspect, um, again, very heavily as uh, a cargo aircraft more than passenger liner now, and you definitely still see it being used in the military. Um, now, the other really cool thing, you guys know I'm very big on documentation. They have promised what is looking like to be an over 1,000 page manual. Now, I do hope that they do as well as their in-flight uh, video tutorials, or excuse me, in-depth video tutorials that they have claimed will be done. Um, there is also, I'm really hoping they also do a, a short guide as well as the in-depth. Um, I know many simulators, uh, flyers, don't particularly enjoy reading through a thousand page documentation. Now, that is not to say I want to discredit that. That kind of documentation is critical for these kind of aircraft, especially when they're talking about the high fidelity that they are mentioning, um, and as well as, um, you know, the just the overall in-depth information that is provided for these aircraft that is oftentimes definitely overlooked. So I do not want to take away from that at all. I just hope they also do sort of a quick start guide as well as the in-depth documentation. Now, um, as far as any kind of release information, they have blatantly said there is no release date in sight at the moment, but once it happens again, it will be a freeware aircraft. The DC slash KC-10 aircraft, I think it's a very iconic aircraft. It is huge. Gosh, it's a monster of an aircraft. And I am definitely looking forward to seeing what happens as this one starts coming closer to fruition. Um, again, I can't even begin to speculate on when we would see any kind of release date or any kind of release information, but it is definitely something that I'm super excited is at least on its way. I really hope that the team continues their work and that they don't get burned out on it. Um, <clears throat> as this article even state goes to state that there have been many freeware add-ons like this, uh, where the team have just unfortunately flamed out and we never saw any of the aircraft come to life. Um, so crossing our fingers, let's give them all the support we can. I hope they have some sort of, um, you know, maybe donation system where we can help contribute, sort of help keep that motivation. Obviously the money is not required, but it certainly does help and makes them feel good about their work. I know that it does for me. That's why I do the Patreon. Um, it certainly, uh, is definitely a motivation grabber, um, and helps keep you feeling appreciated for what you do. So, um, again, cross your fingers. 
This next aircraft should need no introduction, much like the DC KC-10, and that is the Osprey. The Osprey is a tilt rotor aircraft that is basically used very similar in the same aspect as a helicopter um, and has similar principles as, a, as in the fact that it can do vertical takeoff, vertical landings, um, land on you know short deck carriers, uh, and um, you know uh, what's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Marine time uh, deployment aircraft. Now, the cool thing about the Osprey is that once you pull those uh, rotors down forward, she cooks. That, this is an aircraft that turns and burns. It's a very effective troop transport and cargo transport uh, aircraft. And Miltech is doing an absolutely awesome job. There's quite a few YouTube videos on it already as far as its uh, implementation with Microsoft Flight Simulator. It has already been previously done for FSX and P3D, but it's really awesome seeing this coming to um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I wish that they would put it into another simulator later tcs um sorry it's dusty in here uh but uh you know one can hope for a lot of things and we may not always get it the really cool thing about this particular aircraft is it is also extremely tricky to fly unfortunately she also has quite the reputation of some pretty severe accidents uh they fly out uh out here in yuma pretty frequently i'll see them flying around coming over tucson um, as they make the transition back and forth. Um, but uh, it's a very, very unique looking aircraft. The texture work that's being done in Microsoft Flight Simulator is absolutely beautiful. I love what they are doing here. Um, by default, it has a uh, hard mode uh, that will be automatically enabled for its flight characteristics. However, you will ha also have the option of an easier mode if you don't want to deal with it. One of the things that I really enjoy is because of its very large rotors, um, they actually has the rotor lights that you'll see in many, many large rotor aircraft. And I just think they look absolutely cool than snot at night. The Osprey is an aircraft that, uh, even given its track record, I will absolutely be jumping all over. And I do believe that I saw somewhere that we should be looking about the 4th of November. So just a couple of days from now, we may be seeing this aircraft uh, available for purchase. I will absolutely 110% be grabbing this aircraft on its day of release and doing a flight video with it. I am thoroughly impressed with the work that's being done on it. I absolutely love uh, the characteristics of it. It's got that goofy look to it and yet cool at the same time. It sort of has that perfect blend of odd and wow, I want one, you know? <laughs> so anyway, that is Miltech Sim or a Miltech um, MV-22B Osprey. I cannot wait to get my hands on this aircraft. This is going to be a fun one. SimWorks Studios has once again given us an update on the Stoll Dash 7. Remember, short takeoff or landing is what Stoll stands for. Uh, this is an aircraft that is very highly used in uh, some of the more harder reaches or reached airports in the uh, world. Uh, it is an absolutely fantastic looking aircraft. It's been around for a very, very long time. The work that's being done on it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm sure you guys all recognize this aircraft as Luca Airport. Again, very commonly used here because of its ability to very rapidly and very easily get itself off of the ground um, and back on it for that matter. Um, I wish we had a few more screenshots of the aircraft. However, the team has stated that we should see this aircraft within the next coming weeks. So it sounds like it's right around the corner. The overall flight model of the aircraft has been completed for some time, and they are just talking about doing final tweaking. Um, so super excited. It's a four engine aircraft. Um, I think this is what our second four engine aircraft to reach the Microsoft Flight Simulator platform. Um, so, uh, again, very, very uh, cool aircraft opens up a lot of real world flight plans that we could test out with this aircraft and uh, just brings a whole different aspect of flight simulation. So, again, that is SimWorks Studios Dash 7 um, is almost ready for takeoff. The military trainer, the PC-21 from Iris Simulations, is finally available and out in the world, ready for you to uh, grab a hold of it and fly. It is a military trainer, so it's a two-seater aircraft and quite maneuverable and has quite a bit of power. Um, the aircraft itself is just an absolute ton of fun, and you can pick it up from Iris Simulations Store for $34.99. I haven't seen any indication on whether or not the aircraft is available on the Xbox as of yet, or if there's any information on whether or not it's going to be coming that way. However, with a top speed of excess of 400 miles an hour, um, you could really turn and burn with this particular aircraft and really take it to some higher limits. This is another really great aircraft. If you have a bunch of friends, grab it, do some formation flying, some of that hotshot pilot stuff, if you know what I mean. 
and uh, I imagine you'll have a very good time of it. I've been watching plenty of reviews and paying attention to the feedback on the PC-21. It sounds like pilots are having a great time with it. So again, that is through Iris Simulation Store, $34.99 US dollars um, for the aircraft. The Phoenix A320 has been updated to version 1.05.139, in which they have addressed quite a few issues. Everything from exterior volumetric lights, flat behavior, flare loss, side stick updates, and some VNAV adjustments, as well as sound improvements to flaps, slats, fuel pumps, the AVEC, and air conditioning systems. Um, also, the chemtrails, I'm just kidding, contrails have been returned to the aircraft. And if you guys want to see a full change log of the aircraft, be sure to check it out uh, down below. A link will be included in the description. They have definitely put some serious work into the aircraft. Um, I have not flown the Phoenix in quite some time. I, call me a fanboy. I don't know what you want to do, uh, but I truly just enjoy the fly-by-wire A320. I have absolutely nothing against the Phoenix A320. I want to make that perfectly, perfectly, perfectly clear. Um, I own it myself and have flown it multiple times. I just, I think I have found my Phoenix or my fly-by-wire to be my home for A320s, but I definitely do not want to take away from this uh, incredible project. It is an absolutely wonderful aircraft and extremely well done. And I will dare to say in many ways, probably more advanced than the fly-by-wire version. Um, however, do keep in mind the fly-by-wire fly version is still free. But the Phoenix definitely brings a ton of realism, and they are doing an absolutely spectacular job with their update schedule. They have updated the aircraft multiple times, and each one definitely brings significant improvement to the aircraft and thus the simulation experience. FS Realistic is at it yet again, bringing another feature to the application, and that is the first-person effect. Given the first person effect, you will have the ability to walk through the jetways or do a full exterior uh, inspection of the aircraft or walk around the airport as you see fit. It is very important to know that because of this view, you may see a 5 to 15 per, um, frames per second drop as well as possibly some reduced in the anti-aliasing quality. I imagine that has something to do with the nature of the camera view itself and that the sim not being optimized for that particular viewpoint. That would just be my guess. Uh, but it seems to make sense based on the information I'm seeing. However, there's a very awesome video here, you guys. If you want to check it out, I will also be doing a review of this as I do have access to the latest version of the product, and we'll be airing uh, that one up and uh, seeing what it is all about. That is a very awesome perspective, especially when you take into consideration the fact that many of the air or uh, airport developers are doing fully modeled interiors, hangars, um, and uh, as well as terminals that you could actually take through from a first person perspective and actually find yourself, if you're doing a cinematic shot or given that just going for that full immersion, you find yourself actually walking through the airport up to your gate and boarding your aircraft via the jetways or stairs. So that definitely offers quite a bit of immersion and again opens up the window for some really cool cinematic shots. Keep in mind, FS Realistic brings far more to the simulator than just these camera views. Uh, it does a ton for the audio. The audio is absolutely a critical point in uh, immersion and simulation, in my opinion. Um, and it does a wonderful job, as well as adding things like camera shakes, vibrations, and etc. Things that you would expect to hear and see inside a real aircraft. The very awesome part about FS Realistic is if you go to their website directly and download it, you get a free, fully functional, seven-day free trial of the uh, software. So for a full seven days, you can try it out in its full reach um, for seven days before deciding to purchase it. I highly recommend you guys give it a shot. There's no harm in it, especially when it comes, again, free for seven days. You don't have to put in any kind of payment information prior to, nothing like that. Um, at the end of the seven days, the software will simply cease to function until you purchase the license. Um, and again, that is FS Realistics version 2.1 is where this incredibly new feature comes to life. A new application is available for iOS users that is called the Flight Sim Buddy. This is an application that gives you a full three-day free trial. However, then comes with a $24.99 uh, Euros, um, per year subscription. I will say right out of the gate, based on the features that are listed here, such as um, a tool that helps you with multiple phases of your flight. Among the features are planning tools, flight sharing, scratch pad, chart viewer, and checklist creator. Uh, the companion app is only available, again, on iOS. 
but also supports voice commands. Now the voice commands is definitely something new, but there are ways around this. And what I'm going to say with that is my biggest complaint right out of the gate about the store is the $24.99 per year subscription. I don't agree with that. Um, I'm going to, you guys know me, I'm all about sharing the information, but you're going to get my honest opinion every time. Um, a, and I wish I had an iOS. I don't have an Apple device where I would absolutely at least give it a test and see what it's all about. Um, but given the fact that we have things like sky for SimPad, little nav map, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sim Nibor, I think was another one. I can't remember. There's quite a few of them out there. The, uh, um, gosh, I can't think of it now. There's another freeware version. It's a real big name. I can't think of the name. It's right on the tip of my damn tongue and I can't get the damn hell out. Uh, pilot pro or pro pilot. I can't remember the damn name. Anyway, I digress. The fact that you have so many either a versions that are single time purchase, for example, sky for SimPad, you guys know I'm a big advocate of it is only $16 and you only buy it once and you get all the updates and it's already updated twice since my last review of it. Um, so then to charge $24.99 a year for application, when you have applications that either a are free, maybe more cumbersome to use, but free and do similar things, if not all the same things, um, or single time purchases that cost less and you're going to charge $24.99 per year for an app that can do the same thing. It better be a darn hot app. And then especially the fact that it's only restricted to Apple devices where these others are not. Um, I'm sort of on the fence about this one. I think that's um, sort of setting yourself up for failure given the competition that's out there. Essentially what it is is an electronic flight bag. And again, as I before mentioned, there are many other options out there for that. So I'm sort of curious what the developers are thinking when it comes to that kind of price point um, or pricing structure, I should say, in order to maintain functionality of it. Um, now, it may have a lot more. It's real hard to tell. Um, I would love to see a YouTube review of it. Um, I'm, I did look prior to the making of this video to make sure that I wasn't speaking out of, you know, out of place and that there wasn't some incredible feature to it. Like I said, one of the things that re I really do like is there's two. The checklist creator, I think is awesome. And the, and depending on what those features look like, is it just something that you can just create a digital checklist where you have to click everything or does it become interactive? I don't know. Um, and then the, the voice activation, voice activation is pretty cool. But again, there are ways around that through keyboard binds and things like voice attack. Um, there are ways to still get around those kind of things, but yes, having it all in one is definitely something that means a lot and can go very far depending on how far it goes. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this down in the description, especially if you're an iOS user and if you have purchased it, let me know the differences, you know, check out my videos on sky for SimPad and some of those others that are similar to it, or a little nav map. And let me know if, you know, if you can understand why the price point difference is there. Cause I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap up our video for today. We were going to do some scenery, but I actually just noticed there's quite a few of them out there. So I think we'll do a separate video for scenery this week. You guys can keep an eye out for that tomorrow. We have a couple of things coming down through the channel this week, guys. Stick around. We're going to be taking a look at the butt kicker. We're going to be taking a look at a USB headphone jack that allows you to use real world uh, pilot headsets for in your flight simulation. We're going to see if there's any kind of benefit to that or not. We have some uh, triple screen bezel removers that we're going to be taking a look at to hopefully enhance the visual aspect of flight simulation, as well as some other very cool stuff that's coming down the road. Guys, we're going to be showing off the recently built home built cockpit that I've done and showing that to you guys and how I did it and significantly cheaper than you think it would be. So stay tuned to the channel guys. And plus there are a ton of new aircraft modifications and updates that we're going to be taking a look at this week too. Lots to come as always guys, stay safe and healthy and I will see you in the next one.